and I said, please, have you got in touch with the Abirans? And then he said, how do you get in touch with them? I'll show you, I'll do to you what I came to do from Nairobi. Oh. And, and then he, he just, he, he wanted to kill me literally. He was trying to cut my neck and he did manage. He, I don't know how I didn't die that night. Because he cut, you can see a big scar here. So, can you see oh. that? So, he was trying to cut and I'm trying to protect myself. I'm fighting for the neck. Yeah. Because I know he touched there, I'm done. Abuse can be, it starts from manipulative and coercive control all the way to physical. Mm. By the time someone is physical, he's done all this other stuff. Mm. He's manipulated you, he's sexually assaulted you, he's verbally assaulted you, he's done all the works. Mm. So that was me. Hello, good morning and a warm welcome to LNS. My name is Lynn Gugi. Now, I have never started by reading something for you guys on this show, but today I think this is going to be our nini. So le let me just read something for you. I'm holding a book by my guest today and it says, I'll kill you today and finish what I came all the way to Nairobi to do. Abi Mumbi's husband had always been violent, but when he followed her from Kenya to England with murder on his mind, her world came crashing down. Injured, homeless, and thousands of miles away from her children, she thought her life was over, but God had other plans. Almost 20 years on, the Lord has restored the years the locusts had stolen and helped her achieve all that she had set her heart on. She firmly believes he can do the same for all those who put their trust in the in the keeper of dreams well guys that is just kidogo of what our guest is going to be talking about so before i even let her introduce herself i want to thank you guys for being so supportive of our work and as i continue bringing you stories from the uk and its surrounding i hope you can be inspired a special shout out to our amazing host in this place lydia tet olet for making this happen and our amazing sponsors at tap tap for helping us bring you conversations that have the ability to impact lives and now without further ado please allow me to let my guest today introduce herself good morning mom good morning how are you i'm good thank you you look lovely thank you Lynn. and even before you introduce yourself i want to reaffirm and affirm that you are such a gorgeous person thank you beautiful thank you thank god yes you are beautiful your energy is amazing you look thank wonderful you. and thank I you. really do love your outfit. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Rin. Yeah. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. You feeling I'm good? feeling like my heart is beating a little what? just for being here. Oh, really? Why yes. though? Because it's an opportunity oh. and it doesn't come and I don't take it for granted. I'm the one who is honored to be sitting and having this conversation with you. But before we go any further, please introduce yourself to our audience. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yeah. Uh, greetings from the UK with my host Lynn. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you our audience. Thank you Lynn Network viewers and all the supporters. Mm -hmm. I'm really honored yeah. and harbored mm -hmm. to be here. Yeah. My name is Mumbi, Abi Mumbi. Although I wasn't born Abi Mumbi, Abi I gave myself as an inspirational name. Mm -hmm. I was born as Margaret okay. Mumbi. Yeah. Yes. So Margaret Abby Mumbi. Oh, Margaret Mumbi yes. now is You're Abby Mumbi. We don't have but Margaret Abby is anymore. my stage name, so we zero in on. We zero in on Abby. Abby. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Abby. Thank you. You are such a strong soul, as I stated oh. earlier, and I really want our audience to get to listen to your story because I know it's been a journey yes. that you've also been able to capture in a book. Yes. So I know they're looking at me and they're like, Lynn, can we just hear the story already? So please just take us through your story. My story... Mm -hmm. um, Briefly, is that I was just a normal young girl growing up in Kenya in a village on the slopes of Mount Kenya. Mm -hmm. And then 
I went through my education and I'm just going to fast forward mm. to when what we are about today mm -hmm. uh, it started really when I fell in love with this young man mm. and um, we dated, I married him and um, it was a bit of a treacherous journey mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mainly I, I like to say that no one is all bad and no one is all good, but he had his good sides, and, but he had a major, major, major challenge to mm -hmm. a marriage, mm -hmm. which was violence and abuse. Mm -hmm. And I kind of think sometimes you can do so many good things, but you do one big bad thing, and when they are on the scales, all the good stuff is forgotten. down the drain mm -hmm. and can easily be forgotten. Mm -hmm because you have so much negative impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what happened to me. Okay. I was married for 11 years, four babies for this man. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it was violent from the word go. You met him at age? Uh, 25. You were 24. 24. Married How at 25. How old was he? He was 27. Oh, so you are around the same we age? We are almost the same age, yes. Okay, but what, what attracted you to him mm -hmm. that you said, among all other men mm -hmm. that are trying to vibe with me, this yes. is the man yes. I'm going to get married to yes. and have four babies are with? Ah, uh, well, he was, he was nice and handsome. Oh, yeah? He was educated. <laughs> he was in the university. I was also in, doing my higher learning and... Oh. He seemed like he has a lot of potential, mm -hmm. which I believe he still had. Mm. Yes. Okay. He had potential. Yeah. You because he didn't have money, but mm. he had potential. Oh, you were attracted to the potential. I was attracted to many things. Okay. <laughs> including potential. Yes. Including his, his um, the way we just related at that point. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And he was a smart guy. Yeah. And how long did you date for? Mm, before I think you it was moved about in. one year and a half to two years. Yeah, I think. Okay, mm. looking back, mm. do you think you knew him enough during the dating process, mm. and how did he change from the sweet guy you had known through the dating process mm. to this violent person once mm. you were in marriage? And also, I'm mm. just trying to establish uh, something. Yeah. Before you moved in, yes. had he ever been violent to you? No. Okay. He was so lovely. He was actually very lovely by the standards of Kenya. Oh, wow. Very romantic. Okay. In fact, even when I was married, he could have those sides to him. Yes. Like my friends would say, oh, one day we come and you're being helped to remove your braids, and the next day you are screaming. Okay. It and that mm. twists your mind. Mm -hmm. That, like, just... Inakuchanganisha kabisa. Inakuchanganisha kabisa. Because mm -hmm. this is from the so good to so bad and you are going worse. and coming and you don't know whether you are going or coming. Okay. That is a big problem. Now with hindsight, mm. which is a great, great thing, mm. but I didn't have it then. You didn't have it then. Yes. So you move in, you're very young yes. and he starts being violent. Would it? Would you be comfortable telling us about the yes. first time he he was violent and what did you do? He was ever so nice until I was married and I had a baby. The first time he actually hit me or even said, because he could also be very rude, rude like he insult you. Yeah. And you're like, oh God, did you say that? Mm. And that was when my baby was like three months. Yeah. And for me, it was a choker because my dad has never laid a hand on me. And neither have you ever seen your dad lay hands on your mother? No. So what My mom has mm. never, my, my dad and my mom, they are old, but they still have a beautiful relationship. Oh. People think they're there. Yes. <laughs> my son says they are like boyfriend and girlfriend oh. because they are really friendly. Yeah. And sometimes they can also argue like a normal couple that yes. is in love. Yeah. But they argue and then they resolve and they laugh. Yeah. So uh, my son's observation is that they are like boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. And they are old. My mom is 70, 
five yeah. and my dad is are going to be 80. Wow. Go to church together. Yeah. Uh, my dad is not violent. Okay. No. Mm, yeah. So it's what you are craving for in a one? Possibly. Yeah. Yes. And then you saw the complete opposite. Yes. He okay. was loving to start with. Yeah. And then I don't know what tripped. Mm -hmm. And then he became this other person who I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And now I am in the house. I have a baby. Uh, I didn't want to be a single mom. And now I have to think about all those things. Wow. You're thinking about, okay, what can I, well, if I leave, what am I going to lose? And then leaving was not an option in my days. Why? Because some people left, but the, the consequences of leaving is, was so much. Mm. Let's talk about living in Kenya. Let's talk about it. Living in Kenya, where do you go? Do you go to your parents? I did go to my parents a few times and he ended up, I would go today, he'll be there very early in the morning to get us back home. Begging you to return home. Yes, and talking sweet to everyone, mm -hmm. charming everyone mm. to a point when he started and I say, I shared with my family, they could hardly believe he was a charmer. He charmed everyone. He was everyone. such a charmer. And you think, oh, this is, oh, Baba Kevin can't do that. Uh, but that is typical behavior of abusers. Yeah. Uh, I know now, but I didn't know no, then. back then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so um, I also went to a refuge towards the end because going to my parents was just, it was just become, it became a cycle. Mm -hmm. I needed to go somewhere else where I separate and I stay. Mm -hmm. But I can't live in the refuge yeah. forever. Yeah. So I went to the refuge for two weeks with my kids and no phones, totally undercover. So I have space to think. Mm -hmm. But where do you go when you leave home in Kenya with three children? So in my case, I was working in the city yeah. to go to the, to live with my mother in the village, which is about, I think is Karatina is about a hundred and something. Yes kilometers. I yeah. can't be coming to work there. Every day. To get a transfer, mm -hmm. it took a minimum of maybe six months to a year. And in those days, you didn't go to your boss and say, I can't come to work because I fought all night with my husband. Because no one took that with any empathy. Yeah, that's not an excuse. It was not an excuse. People do that it every day. It was not an issue at the time. And by the way, the people I shared with, they were like, oh, you have seen nothing. And then they would tell me what they have seen. You can now send money to Kenya at great rates and with zero transfer fees. Trust TapTap for convenient, safe, and fast transactions to M-Pesa and to Kenyan bank accounts. Download today and get a bonus on your first transfer. So let, mine let, was mild. Let's talk about that part here. Mm. I'm coming, I'm telling you what I've been through. Yes. You are telling me, mm. usijali, ya kwa atani Ujaona kitu. Ujaona kitu. Mimi, nimepigwa, nimekibiswa na upanga, nimefanya nini, and you are like, oh God, it's minimized. It's normal. So what are you fasting about? Now that part, where do you go? We've established. You mentioned something. You did not want to be a single mom. Mm. Why did you not want to be a single mom? Because I've shared stories. And every time a woman tells me, Lins kuantaka kuwa single mom, mm. what was the stereotype mm. around single motherhood? Very negative. Mm -hmm. Very negative. Actually, I would have been personally be brave enough to be a single mom because I was working, I was yeah. economically empowered, mm. although now there were those issues of transfers and getting to move from that town because I would need a space. Mm -hmm. And to work that out was nearly yeah. impossible. Yeah. And I, you need the time. They wouldn't give you as an emergency because yes. you have home issues. In fact, yeah. you don't tell your people at work that that is. 
and then the shame attached to the whole subject. Reason why I come out to talk. My aim is to break the taboo of talking about this. Because there is no shame in being a victim. There is shame in being a perpetrator. And an enabler. And an enabler. And as a community, we need to sort ourselves mm -hmm. and try to have a bit of empathy because yes. this issue affects each and every person. Okay. So there was nowhere to go. If I went, if like I went to live with my mothers, I would possibly not work for some months looking for an alternative job. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is no like social support or anything. Mm -hmm. I'm talking that because now I have lived in a different environment where there is a little bit of, of support. support. So like if I'm suffering with that, mm -hmm. I can go to the council today yeah. with my children and I can, you know what, I am at the point of, I'm at least king, mm. especially here when they hear domestic violence, they yeah. take it serious because yes. they know you are living with your death yeah. as a shadow mm -hmm. anytime yeah. or serious injuries. Okay. So I can go to the council and they'll give me emergency shelter, yeah. even if it's just for a short time before mm -hmm. I sought myself. So in my case, I left and went to work in Bot. I went to live in Botswana. Yeah. Actually, he took me to Botswana. He took you? He took me. Okay. Like, he got a contract. He was a very educated man. Yeah. He had he did his master's in Birmingham University here. Oh. Uh, so he was a consultant, mm. and he took us all there. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to to uh, register as a nurse, mm -hmm. so I couldn't practice. Back home you were working as a Back nurse? Back home I was working, yeah. leave my job, yeah. follow my husband, become a full-time housewife and homemaker yeah. to support my husband because dream. he's, yeah, to support his dream. Wow. I still got beats there. <laughs> How long in marriage had you guys been? How many years of marriage? By when? By, when you By the to... time you went to Botswana? We were... We went in 98, so about eight years. In marriage. In marriage. And you had three kids now. I had three kids now. So you became a full-time housewife. Full-time housewife. In Botswana. In Botswana. Mm. And I I had a daughter. Mm -hmm. I had, my daughter was born there. Okay. Yeah. When he would be to in Botswana, because mm. this is also another African country, mm. were there channels of support? Yes, Botswana is far ahead of us. Oh my. Very far ahead of us in the way they view things. And, um, okay, the whole thing is set up with the social, the way the society is set up. So in Botswana, when education came, there, is, there were also inequalities. The boy child is precious. The girl child is not so precious. So when education came, they figured or they thought education turns your mind around, you become kind of crazy. And they can't afford their boy child to go and be crazy. So they took the girls to school. Oh. Them, if they are crazy, it's fine. Oh. <laughs> I'm talking the in... The sacrificial lamb. Yes. We were the sacrifice now. Now, how it turned out is that the women, the became, women became very empowered. educated, very empowered, and the boy child is... So, so the now, women set structures in place yes. to protect them. Ministers, a uh, big cars on the road is a woman. Big posts, there are a lot of them are women. There are few men, of course, yes. it'll be few. Yeah. But the women are far ahead now. Mm -hmm. And it's like yeah. that. But because of that, uh, there's a very powerful shaman called Emang Basadi. Yeah. I'm yeah. interested in social stuff. Okay. So this among Basadi is out for the women lights. So now in Botswana, actually, the biggest I took is they have, when you marry, like when I left my home, that's another reason why you don't live. In Kenya, especially I talk about my community, which I know when it goes haywire, you lean and your babies, you live with the clothes you are wearing. Leave everything as it is. This is in the Kikuyu community. How do you start life? And this man doesn't even want to know that his babies go to school, eat. In fact, he would be happier if you didn't eat. 
So you go, you possibly get another woman. You have three, he get a woman with five kids, take them to school, bring them in the house, they live happily ever after, eating your sweat and haze, of course, because you are young, yes. and you go with nothing. The way you are wearing with your kids, how do you start? That is a big step. But in Botswana, their wealth is cattle and they are in the field. So when we get married, like the way we build houses, they, like, they are the biggest exporter of, of beef. Mm -hmm. So they raise cattle yes. and the cattle live in the sheds. The men, the boy child, <laughs> please guys, I'm not against uh, boys. Yes. I'm, I am a mother. Yes. I'm a mother of boys and girls. Yeah. So I don't come out to push lights for mm. women mm. or what. I am after healthy relationships that benefit all. Because mm. when it goes crazy, you might think you are the winner, but there is no winner. Mm. So the men would know that this is going k leg very early. Women normally don't pick up. They are all like just fighting and explaining bad stuff and bad behavior and you're thinking, oh, it's gonna work out. Mm -hmm. just had, had, he just had a bad day. Yes. He's having a bad time at work. He knows that this is going to the liver. So what they do, what they used to do, they would start getting, selling all the cattle from the field. Because the law says when you're married, when you part, is half and half. 50-50. But now you go to the field and there are only three calves. All the cattle has been sold. So half and half of three calves. Mm -hmm. What can it do for Nothing. you? So the Mang Basadi has pushed for the law to change. Mm -hmm. When you go to marry, there is a difference. We can marry two ways. You two people who are getting married, you decide whether it is in community. So we buy this vase, mm -hmm. verse, mm -hmm. this cup is for everybody. When it goes hoi hoi, you go half and mm -hmm. half. But now, skills are not even. Power mm -hmm. skills are mm -hmm. not even. So when you are getting married, you ask, is it in community or out of community? Yeah. Out of community, I buy a cup. It is Mombi who bought that cup. Kweru hoi hoi, my cup and my share, and we run. And God for us all. So wow. there is no half and half. Yes. And a lot of people opt for that, yeah. and it kind of helps the powers, mm. Mm. the power balances. Okay. So, um, and if you are reported to that among Bazadi <laughs> as a man, yeah. your life is basically gone wow. because you leave no stone unturned. You're yes. not gonna like be have any way to oppress anybody. Okay. It will be sorted. So you felt safe in Botswana? No, I didn't because uh -huh. I am not a Muswana. And I didn't know all that. Now, this is information that you are got that later. later. Mm -hmm. So why do people stay? I get people asking that question. I just touched on that. Mm. Why do, does someone stay? But what have they got to do to get out? And what? So a lot of people is think like, like I would think like, if I live now, will I live and go with these children and live in Madare where I can afford to live now? As a single mom, will I be wearing my uniform and go to work from Madari, from the streets? So it is really big. What, where do you go to? Where do you go to? Where do you go to? Okay, take us back to now your life in Botswana and what happened after. My life in Botswana, um, we just went for three years. I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, I have my suspicions, like maybe he just was tired and wanted to leave work because he got his contract renewed. Mm. Before that, he had stated <coughs> that he want to go home and just, I'm like, what are you going to do home? And I was expecting my daughter was like this. Mm. So what are we going to do? You were carrying your my last daughter child. daughter conceived her there mm. and I was near a delivery. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had <coughs> some neighbors, mm. no, some some young men who had finished uni and they were looking for work. Mm. So they were leaving, they were renting my SQ. Okay. They were Kenyans. Yeah. And they were very concerned when mm -hmm. he said that he want to leave work. Mm -hmm. So they told me. So I asked him, I understand you want to leave work. Why? 
Let me see me, I just want to go to my mom's and and stay there in the village. Remember, I've left my own job now. I don't have a job. I'm like, what are we going to do then with the children? Oh, can we be, can I be left here? Why? Say me, I just want to go. He didn't go at that time. Mm. And then like three months later, now my daughter was born. She was like three weeks. Then he went to work and he came back. And he told me, I've been sad. I don't 100% believe it. I think he just mm. followed through mm. that other desire to mm. go home. I don't know why. Then I tried to ask him if he could get some work. But this time, when you go abroad, even here, mm. it takes so much time. It takes some people 20 years to find direction. Because it's a totally different environment. And before you know how to manipulate it, we come with big ideas how we are going to get all these pounds and do big things. But you find a lot of people are just going loud and loud in circles. It's very difficult mm -hmm. in a new environment. Mm -hmm. So uh, we had spent a lot of time. It was now feeling like now our children are in good schools which were paying very high fees. Mm -hmm. And it was starting to feel like it's going to be okay after all. Mm -hmm. I'm still not working. I'm still yeah. not registered. So what I did, I became a hawker. I was selling curio. So I'm very doing person. I mm. always fight like something else to do. Mm -hmm. So I was selling my curio. Now yeah. my business was picking up. Yeah. Had few surprise. Uh, sub people I used to supply. Mm. And he's earning money. So we were kind of settling down. Mm -hmm. And now this is over. Yeah. So he said to him, he has to go. And you have to tag along. So again, we packed our bags. We went back. And it was very, very difficult. I didn't want to come here, but that's the reason I came here. Because mm -hmm. now it was desperate. And I could see maybe my kids are not going to go to school if I hang out here. So mm -hmm. I'm going to look for a way. Mm -hmm. So I initiated the process. And then I came. Now here in the UK. In the UK. Mm -hmm. And I stayed in the refuge two weeks before I came here. Mm. Because I had a very bad beat. Actually, I don't know why I didn't die that time. I wasn't meant to die. He <laughs> beat you again in Kenya. He beat me like properly. And now your properly. child, your last born is how many months? My last born that time was, was I left her when she was one year. Yeah. So she was two weeks before she turned one year. Because oh. I had to stop her breastfeeding to come here. Okay. Yeah. So uh, when I went to Botswana, I didn't leave some little help that has come up. Yeah. Feeder. Yeah. Uh, rights, women rights awareness yeah. program. <laughs> I went there those early days. Mm. And I stayed there for two weeks. Mm -hmm. Lizon, I stayed there now. The way it works with an abuser, and no disrespect, I know that men also suffer from, from abuse, but it's not as much. There are less. There may be issues of reporting, but also there are issues of reporting with women. Mm. And so um, when I went, I didn't, there was nowhere you could go except your mother. Stay mm -hmm. for a few days. Let the dust settle, mm. come back mm. home. But this time I went and um, I was attached. When I came before, when I was organizing my coming, I managed to go back to work in the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. And I had done a course, so I was not working in the, in the bedside. I was working in the offices. Mm -hmm. And I was working in Nairobi Prophets. My office was in Nyayo House. Yeah. So when I was there, before I started the job, uh, education is my thing. Yeah. So I was going around all the all the provinces or where people were stationed to meet the managers and sort of to link mm -hmm. up before I started the, the what I was gonna do. Mm -hmm. So I went somewhere and I met a girl I was in college with and she was doing counseling. And at that time, every time I went out, I was happy. As the day went on, I was thinking, God, I'm going to go home. I'm going to share that bed with that man. And it's only by God's grace I'll see tomorrow. That was, I had come to realize that. And I would get, 
more and more worried as the day goes by. So this girl was doing counseling and women are lining up mm. there for counseling. Mm. Mm. Then as she was doing it, it was around one and I'm thinking, I'm finishing at four and I was losing focus because of the fear I had of him. And at some point I'm like, I'm at least gonna share with this, this girl, but how? She would really look at me down or something. And then I went, I told her, you know, you are counseling people. I think you are, it's me. You should give me some counseling. I said, what's wrong? And she removed the people who are of the city and talked to me. So I told her, I told her, I told her. She was like, I'm like, tell me something else. That I've already figured you. that. Yeah. And that is my greatest figure. Mm. But what do I do? Mm. And then she told me, you know, this is not the Kenya you knew. When you went to Botswana and what, they have all people who support. Where are they? They are in Kenya, Kenyatta market and mm. we are in Bagadi. Mm. So she, she said, just go. Where? She told me where to go. I went to FIDA. Mm. And when I went to FIDA, they are like, we don't take crimes in the afternoon. I'm like, guys, what am I going to do? Because I don't know whether I'll be here tomorrow before midday so you can see me. It's that bad. And they said, oh, what? Then they said, cross the road and walk to Women's Rights Awareness Program. And I went there. By this time, I have a visa to here. But the day is not yet. Mm. But now, so I went. And those ones, they took me. But they are asking, okay. Where are the children? They are at home. He wasn't working at the time. So he's at home throughout. So I'm like, I can come, but how do I get the children? And he's like, can you snatch them? I can't snatch them. That little one, he was, she was raised here. She was here the whole time. He said, go and tell him the baby has a fever. I'm like, when the baby has a fever, he is the first one to know because that baby was raised here. The whole time mm. she used to sleep, they sleep, they wake up, she's still here. Mm. She is fed, she's here. Mm -hmm. So I can't lie to him. So, and then he used to tell me, what you're thinking? I know what you're thinking. Whenever you're cooking something, I know. I know I'm out of, and I would believe mm. it's intimidation. He had intimidated me to a point I own. And then... He, gosh, I can't tell you how it is, but I understand people when they are going through that. So he said, can I come with a, a Naskali with guns? And I was scared. I didn't want him. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in going away. So I don't want to have to leave a document. And then he's going to spoil the whole now, mm -hmm. my escape, mm -hmm. which is like in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying, because you go in a hurry and you forget something. And you can't get it. And you know yes. all this. But now, uh, this eventually I managed to get out. The boys went to the shops. And he was in the house and I fooled him. And I put the baby in the back. And then I asked for the boys. And he said they have gone. And I pretended I am going to the shops. And we went away. With your boys? With my boys and my daughter. Mm. With the clothes we were mm. wearing. Mm. We are in Mutumba, yeah. buying our clothes change, all sorts. So I went to the refuge. Mm. I stayed there for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And he was looking for me everywhere, lying in the office, that I went to a barrio and I didn't come back mm -hmm. because there was a colleague who had died mm -hmm. trying to get, figure out where I was. Because yeah. he went to my mother's, I wasn't there. Yeah. My brother's, I wasn't there. And then uh, eventually we worked out with the office. Mm -hmm. Now the light, Women's Rights Awareness yes. Program people, yeah. Yeah. we worked out how we might resolve it and how what might work for me. Yeah. So she had to check whether the visa can be cancelled because he threatened to cancel that. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? Yeah, mainly that. Mm. Contacted the embassy, it can be cancelled once it's given because yes. it's UK. Yeah. So my visa was safe. And um, then we were like, what are we going to do with the children? Normally you don't get children uh, visa with the children, mm. even when you are coming to work. In fact, you have to prove to them that you're not coming to stay. Mm. So you'd say, I'm coming to see, to train and go back. Yeah. You know, they have 
called you to work yes. because you wouldn't get the visa. Yeah. So um we decided that if we take the children to someone he's going to be troubling them. Yeah. The issue is between me and him. So let me go once I'm removed then is going to be kind of yes. peaceful yeah. because of distance. Yeah. So he was called to the office mm. and negotiated and you know what he shamed those guys as well he shamed that lady that lady had been harassed a lot in Kenya those days when i went there he had they had moved offices like three times because they were they touched big people mm. like mps mm. mm -hmm. and policemen oh. and they were being harassed yes. big time so they would they, they we were in westland that time he mm. came to the office mm. he said to that lady mrs koye we had a lot of poverty because our dad abandoned us or didn't support us my my marriage will never end in the divorce and she talked so charming in the evening the lady called me and said Hey, Mombi, that guy is ready to do anything for you. Like she believed him. Mm. So I went back. It was all nice. But there were still lipos. Mm. And then up to the time I came, I breathed when I came. But even here, he would really terrorize me here. How? On the phone. It's called abuse can be it starts from manipulative and coercive control all the way to physical mm. by the time someone is physical he's done all these other stuff mm. he's manipulated you he's sexually assaulted you he's verbally assaulted you he's done all the works mm -hmm. so that was me mm. so when i'm here he would call me like six times a day six times and he's not saying anything where Holera, can you call me now? I'm coming from night duty. We are buying a card. So I don't sleep. I go to the post office, get a card. By the time I do that, he's really angry. I get a card of five pound. Five pound, you can check the equivalent. Mm. Mm. And then I didn't have money because I had just come. Not that I have a lot of money now. Mm, okay. But I'm blessed. <laughs> You're blessed. Amen. <laughs> so yeah. he'll use that whole card to insult me. Won't even tell me anything. And who has the kids now? He has the kids. Oh. That's the problem. So you have to pee because you I think have to pee. this maybe is an update about my kids. Yes. And then he would tell me, Wada Kanani, you never see these kids forever. So he had a hold on me. And when he say that, my heart stops. And now looking back, I know he could have done anything to reach them. I mean, my scars, I can live with them. God has healed me. But... If he touched the kids, I would have been, that would have done me. Wow. And then I'm thinking, I contemplated going to snatch them and bring them. So I've got to start looking for a visa for mm -hmm. them because I can't take a bus like yes. It will take me at least two weeks to sort out that. And maybe Nairobi looks big, but it is more. If I'm seen in Nairobi and he has not seen me, mm -hmm. that is just basically putting my kids in the grave. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to do that. So I was like, God, what am I going to do? I'm just going to bring him. Maybe when we are here, he I can change. work something out and maybe be able to get out. So I sent him all the papers to get his visa and the kids. Hey. Yes. And I sent the money. And he went to the visa and he got the visa the same day. Wow. Mm. And that was, after I came, was like less than six months. Mm. In fact, except for harassing me and I couldn't focus, I would have done it sooner. But he was really harassing me. So, yeah, and um, he went, he got, do you know, he went, I sent him the money. He went, he got the visas, then he went and shopped for himself and boarded a plane and left the children by themselves with the person who was looking after them who was a young girl. And he came here. And he came here and he's not answering the phones. Actually, I'm talking to him when he, and he's like, and then he went and left the phone somewhere. 
and I was calling and calling you was there born. He has my addresses. You see, uh, the way I found you, if you have the postcode, you just go and knock on the door and uh, I said, it's you, yeah. So you just saw someone? I didn't see him because yeah. I was in Birmingham. Mm. I was moving mm. to Oxford. Mm -hmm. So I've gone to Oxford to look for a family house. So he said, this is so and so. I'm like, oh, that is a Birmingham post, I mean, calling code. How come? He's like, just come, I'll tell you. Because he believed whatever he does, I will do. Mm. I can tell you that day I so dark. I'm like, are you with the children? No. You didn't come with them? No. And I tell you, I was working day and night to make it that happen. People who live here, they know how hard it is to bring family. Mm. First of all is the cost. And second of all is what you are required to have by the visa. Not just the cost of their coming, but you have to show you have a big house for them to live. Like it's him and two, three children. I needed a three bedroom house at least. And I needed money to show that I can sustain them because they are coming out of me. And he left them. He didn't. So, yeah, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Mm. So Tatu Kwanza Kuishi from mm. that point because he's in another city. Yeah. It is a three hour coach ride yeah. to Birmingham, mm. you see. And me, I'm down south. Mm. And I've been there the whole day. I'm trying to find a house. Then I'm like, so he knows because he has the papers, he knows where I work. He knows where I live. So he went there. And uh, it was very funny because he went like, you know, Kenya, which is a big hospital in Nairobi now. Kenyatta. I Kenyatta. Think. It's like starting to ask for a staff from casualty. Ah, no. And here is even bigger than mm. Kenyatta mm. by far. Mm. So it went like Chinese whispers. Mm. It was going, mm. oh, and they are asking, asking, asking until they go to my manager. By the time it got to my manager, it wasn't like he's in casualty. Yes. It's like my, my husband is in Kenya mm. looking for me. Mm. So there is an emergency. And then he went to my, where I stayed, I was not there and he was not allowed in because I was stayed in a shared accommodation. Yeah, yeah. You're not allowed guests. Yes. And then he went, he took himself to the police station. Yeah. Believing that I'll be forced to take him. Yeah, he had controlled me to that extent. He believed that, I don't know. I would like to know how his mind was working. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was really upset. I was really, really upset, especially the children bit, because I hadn't seen them like yeah. for eight months, yeah. seven months. Yeah. And the little one was one year when I left. She wasn't even talking mm -hmm. when I left. And then um, I'm like, what am I going to do? I thought I would take a plane and go fetch them, but that again was mm. too big yeah. at that point. Uh, speaking with some few friends, they are like, you know, it has happened, we need to find a way, way forward, and life has to go on. Mm -hmm. And even if you are upset, you know the way we deal with stuff like yes. that. Most of my friends were Kenyan mm -hmm. by then. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that Kenyans, but we have a view that we it's not a, a big thing. A mentality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I went for him mm -hmm. from the police station. Yeah and took him home mm. god two weeks down the line so i wasn't i was upset i won't lie i was upset and i was like why would you let me do all this work and then you leave the children and he say oh all sorts of and anyway whatever he did was unquestionable mm. and then and when he was there i used to ask him what are you coming to do you hear yes uh, masters in mm. from Birmingham mm. so he could go to education he could do so many things so when I asked are you thought about what you're coming to do it's none of your business if I want to come and lie in the house like a log it does not concern you yeah. that is the way we were communicating at that point wow. yes mine is just he lied like a log and I feed him and I do I don't know I don't know, I don't understand that now, right now. But he has my children. What will I do? What will I do? You have to play along. I have to play along. 
So I went and got him. And then we came, we talked. I fed him as well for the few days. What will I do? So, <coughs> and I got a house. We went to the agency and he refused to sign the tenancy. And those guys were, Nwazungu, they thought that was really weird. Now I pick it as a bad thing, a bad sign, but I was used to him sabotaging what I'm doing. So it wasn't a big for me. So I just signed the tenancy. Mm -hmm. And then we went home and I said, okay, since you have just, and he paid a one way. So if, since you have just come, uh, I think it's better if we go and get the children so we can focus and start settling mm. as a family. Mm. And he said it was okay. So I had no money at that point. All the money I've sent him for visas, tickets and what, and he doesn't give me anything back. So I went to the bank and got a loan. And the bank here, <laughs> you go and you get like, I got a 4,000 pounds loan. I just went to talk to a PA there. I said, can I get a loan? Oh, yes, you can get a loan. Oh, wow. And, and I said, when will I get it? By the time you reach the cash point, it will be in your, in your account. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I got it. Then I said, okay, I'll book a plane and uh, I'll go get the children. And because you are very stressed with monies, I was going to go to work and go from work, go to work up to 9 p.m., and then in the morning, mm. take a bus to the airport mm. and then travel home. Mm. And I hoped I could also say hello because I've not been there for a yeah. time. Yeah. And that was all like, okay, it seemed okay. And then on the night that I was supposed to travel, I go to work and he also went to work. We had looked for a day. not mm. not professional, mm -hmm. but when you come, you do whatever job. If they give you a broom, you sweep. sweep. If it's looking after children, you look, look after children mm -hmm. and get whatever mm -hmm. number of pounds mm -hmm. while you are looking for what you mm -hmm. really want to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, he was doing security. Mm -hmm. So he went and started doing some work and I was doing some work. Yeah. And then when I came from work, I finished at 9 p.m. Mm -hmm. And he's like, actually, it's me who should go to get the children. And I'm trying to work out like where is that coming from and they say how how what am i how are we gonna do that that was it is it and we must sort it how are we gonna sort it now at this point because i paid the fright how that wow. is the big question i asked yeah we didn't quarrel and then he attacked me really badly on that night Mm. He bit my nose off, and then I was bleeding. He said, please call the ambulance for me. He went down, because I tried to call, and he took the phone and smashed it on the wall. And I said, okay, call the ambulance for me, because I'm did it, losing blood. And he went downstairs. Then he went and had a smoke, and he stayed. I went to check if he had got the ambulance. I took a towel like this to stop the bleeding and then I didn't know he was holding a knife and then he attacked me anyhow he could um, because when I came down he was leaning on the counter like this and he was having a fight then I said please have you got in touch with the abirans and then he said how do you get in touch with them I'll show you I'll do to you what I came to do from Nairobi and, and then he he just he, he wanted to kill me literally. He was trying to cut my neck, and he did manage. He, I don't know how I didn't die that night, because he cut. You can see a big scar here. So can you see Aww. that? So he was trying to cut, and I'm trying to protect myself. I'm fighting for the neck, yeah, because I know he touched there. I'm done. So I'm fighting, and it was so sharp, it cut my ear, it fell to the ground. And it cut from the ear down all the way to here. And then I had another two slashes here, you yeah, can see the scars. Yeah. But I healed very nicely, yeah. I thank God. Amen. So 
I was bleeding, bleeding, and I'm pleading, I'm begging, I'm negotiating. I'm telling him, you know, I brought you. I have no other mission except for our family. And you know, you know you'd know, say anything, and he wouldn't stop. So when he couldn't cut my neck, because we really struggled with that, and he cut my fingers while well, I'm trying to, to protect myself. My fingers were almost falling off. But again, I heal nicely. This one was almost falling. You can see the scar from mm. here all the way to the back. And at that point, I think he got frustrated. And then he just chopped me like a cabbage. Chop, chop everywhere. That chopped there, there. Uh, the eyes were chopped everywhere. And at this time he had beat your nose. He had beaten it, but now he also cut. But it, it has taken the doctor so many surgical operations for me to look this nice. Uh, like maybe 15 or more. I refuse to have any more. I was happy with with. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, I, 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 I thank God because he has reconstructed me. Amen. Yes. So then... Um, he still didn't call the ambulance, but somehow I found myself with the phone. I learned, I went upstairs and I found myself, I didn't know the house very well. I was looking for a room where I can lock myself. And in the house, the only idea I had where you can lock is the bathroom. And it's that small koji, mm. that mm. little mm. latch. Mm. So I went and it's a bottom bathroom that had that. The top bathroom didn't have. So I went and by this time I was weak because of loss of blood. Mm. So I just leaned on the wall like this and I had the phone. I said, God, please, please God, for the sake of my two-year-old and my boys, just save my life. Just save my life. I think that is the time he stopped cutting me. He was determined. And then I, I sat down like this and then and I called the ambulance. He said, I'm bleeding to death, please just help me the, the, what happened and he was just stop talking just said the ambulance but they were trying to talk to me to keep me alive and alive and then he came and he pushed me like this he pushed me opened the door because I was leaning on the door he was talking on the background is that him yes is he armed no he is not I've done that so I can be taken home. He said that. He said that. And that is two weeks after arriving here. With a five years, five years work visa, spouse dependent visa that allow you to travel, that allow you to work, that allow you to do what you like. Five years. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Rin. No, it's all right. So, and uh, I, I know it was planned because he also left his certificates by the fireplace. Somewhere he'll grab quick when he gets to go. But he didn't know he has to sort it before he goes. So, yeah, he, he, I went to the prison and I went to the hospital. Hmm. He went to prison? Yeah, five years. Five years he was in prison. Yeah. And then deported. And then deported? Mm. Mm. How are you? I am good. Okay. By the grace of God, yes. God has done work in me. I'm healed from inside out. Yeah. I'm actually not here to cry yeah. and to, you know, get sympathy. I don't like getting yes. sympathy. Yeah. Yeah. I like empathy. Mm. I like, but I am here to encourage someone. I'm here to give somebody hope. I'm here to show that it, it is possible to rise again and God is going to encourage people. Yeah. God is going, your dreams will still be, are still valid mm. because by that time my dreams were basically dead. But I've seen God building me up, God. bringing me back. Good. Now my children are grown ups. They are here? Yeah, All they are here. Them. So after he went to prison, mm. I came from hospital. The first yeah. thing I did was to contact the visa center to allow my kids to come. It was very, a lot of stuff going, yeah. but yeah, they managed to oh. come. And they are grown here. Yes. 
Yes, they are big people. The girl is 22 now. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yes. You have a 22 year old. The girl, yes, the youngest. The one that you left, the, the one, one was who two grew, years. used to be here. So, the, your firstborn is? My firstborn is 32. Oh, man. They have 10 years in between. I would be your firstborn now. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Please. I would be the firstborn now. Yes. 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 Wow, that I like that you said you are not, you don't like the sympathy, but you like uh, the reason I got a bit emotional. It, it took me somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I, I just think that you said you are, you even said you don't want more operations and no, stuff. I don't want any. But for anyone who is watching and they have not done the inside work, mm. Because it takes a lot yes. to face yourself in the mirror mm. and say, he did this to me. Yes. And to have a constant reminder mm. of what he put you through. Yes. From here to the scars to everything. Mm. How do we heal? Mm. How do we heal past the scars? How do we get to heal and not see the scars mm. and start seeing the beauty yes. that was within us? It's, it's a journey. <laughs> It's a journey. I've done it. I've explained very well in yeah. the book. Yeah. Uh, because it's not possible to put it just yes. in this yeah. one hour. Yeah. But the reason I, I did the book was to first to share the story as a testimony mm. of what God has done mm -hmm. in my life and yeah. what God can do mm. and to give hope to people. And also to shed light about the system, how the systems mm. work together. Yeah to make sure the systems are like a feast. So there's the government, the, the society, the community, every system, including schools, mm -hmm. they work together. Mm -hmm. They work together mm -hmm. to make sure mm -hmm. that those structures mm -hmm. remain. Yeah. Some of them are negative. Yeah. So for me, for you ask me how to heal, I struggled very much with things like forgiveness. I believe you cannot heal without forgiving. Forgiveness is the beginning of your, your healing. Having said that, I always like to make it clear why I got so far. One thing is that forgiveness thing. Because to our community is forgive and forget and go back to business as usual. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. Yeah. You forgive. I was relating with you, you betrayed me or you did something that you shouldn't have done. I forgive you. That doesn't mean I we, trust you. And it doesn't mean we have to be reconnected. And it doesn't mean we have to be reconnected. So in the case of domestic violence, and I have been told forgive so many times, and I would forgive and go back to the house. Mm. And it will be until the next time mm. I'm doing mm. a session of forgiving and going back. Yeah. And look where it got me. But that is not what we are supposed to be. You're supposed to be wiser after that relating. Mm. And if you have done wrong to a person, you get forgiveness is free. But you work with your trust. You earn your trust. Because I trusted you, you betrayed that. Now you have got to work towards regaining the trust. And that takes time. Good. It's not like... yes business yes. back to business yes. no so it's not that i have forgiven him by the way and that was a good thing okay but i struggled so much i have forgiven him totally yes. he owe me nothing has he ever reached out to a he, has. he has not to apologize i don't think he has capacity for that what did he reach <laughs> out to <laughs> i think there is the belief that a woman will always come back he has Even asked some you to people, go back. some people actually go back when they are dead, isn't it? Yeah. Haven't you seen those cases? Mm. And you are thinking like you had no business when I was alive. Why do you want to be in my business when I'm dead? Mom, hold on. He has <laughs> asked you to go back to him. He didn't literally ask. He is a bit arrogant. He won't ask. But what does he mean by calling me on Valentine's Day? <sighs> so I'm like, guy, mm, please. If you're not busy on Valentine, other people are busy. <laughs> Stay away. <laughs> Stay away. I was working a shift. <laughs> you on shift. But I wanted to, yes. to suggest I'm busy, busy. with the Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're not busy, 
Other people I'm are busy. busy. Don't we call got, me. We got business to do. <laughs> hey, mom. Uh -huh. But forgive. But, but it doesn't mean we have free. to be reconnected. Forgiveness is for your own sake. There you go. Yes. Because if you don't forgive, and without being too spiritual, but it is spiritual and it yes. is also rife with yeah. it. Yeah. If you don't forgive, uh, okay, I'll quote the Bible. Mm. Not afraid to be spiritual. Yeah. Okay. It says, forgive, otherwise it will become a loot of bitterness yes. that will defile many. Yeah. So I don't want to have a loot of bitterness that will defile me and defile uh, my children and all that toxicity. I want it out of my life. It was a journey. I mm -hmm. would lie to you with a lot of mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. trying to help me. Yeah. I would say I've forgiven and yes. then I used yes. to have bad dreams. Yeah. Obviously. And Someone talked me through and it's mm. like you forgive with your mind yeah. and your heart catch up with you. Mm. So when I did that and prayer and grace mm. and I believe we could have a coffee except for the fear of my safety. How is the, his relationship with your kids, with the children mm. and what do you tell the kids about their father? Okay, I started the very beginning. I figured that it happened to me, yeah. although it happens to them. Don't be fooled. This thing, like, he abused me, but he is a good father. It's a Pharisee. There's nothing like that. And my son just confirmed it to me. Right. At the beginning, they said, is because he knew daddy came to me. Mm. Is daddy coming home? I said, guys, daddy is not coming home today tomorrow or ever but when you are grown up and you want to go and look for your daddy I won't start in the way actually I'll support you but that is when you are grown up and you know that when it gets toxic when it gets dangerous you exit mm. that was the first first conversation mm. and then we have uh, there has been a lot of impact with the children to deal with because it affects them very negatively, very, very negatively. Mm. But I have tried to talk to them about forgiveness and that. And like recently I said to my son, I have two sons. Mm -hmm. One is that I had three sons, yeah. but one passed away. I, had, I have two sons, two living sons mm. who are grown up. One is 27. The other one and the is one 32. is 32. Mm. And the girl is 22. So the one who passed on was the third one? Third one, yeah. Our condolences. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. I bless the Lord. Amen. Uh, so I say to him, um, you need to forgive him. I want them to forgive for their own sake. But my son says, it's my journey. I need to walk it. Wow. I know you have done yours, but he, and I understand that. But I encourage that. And then I say, I shoot my mouth one day and say, actually, he didn't do anything to you. And my son was like, yes, except trying to kill my mother. And I was. That's deep. Yes. So, and kids here, they talk. Yeah, they are not I've mild noticed. like our kids. No, I've A two-year-old will tell you a story you think no, is an old man. I've noticed. <laughs> and they are very brutally honest. They are very honest. Yes, they will tell you the honest. truth. Like that son of mine, he'll tell you the truth. You deal with it, you die, you do what? Mm. He'll tell you the truth. Mm. He's very genuine. Mm. He's very genuine. Mm -hmm. So when he said that, I'm like, okay. When I go home, uh, I ask them, do you want to see your father? When he was here, I tried because they... They figure like it can be a good thing. Mm. So even if a father is as bad as what, but they'll make sure you are safe. Yeah. So some men or women yes. who have got issues, yeah. they go to a contact center. They will see the children mm -hmm. with somebody else. Okay. Because those people have tendencies either to manipulate. Yeah. If they can't reach you, they'll use the children to yes. reach you or yeah. something else yeah. crazy. Yeah. So here they have got system mm. that tries to work against that mm. so i the we were going to mediation they offered to take them to prison to see him and i said okay if they have to go and they want to go they will have to go 
and they offer to take them by themselves. I'm like, no, my children are not going with a stranger. It's painful. If I have to come, I'll come with them to support them. Yeah. And then he declined. He said, I don't want them to see me like this. I won't have them see me in prison. I'm like, okay. Be free then. That's fine. Mm. I didn't put you there. Mm. Although everyone in the family feels I put him there. The family Even him from if your you side ask him his, his side, side, of course. His side. Even if you oh, ask him. We are still going back to the whole African thing. You shouldn't oh, have reported. Oh, you God. Have, though he even they did were very all this. Cross. They were very cross. Even if I died, I don't think it would have been as big an issue as like he was actually they blame locked. You. Yes! They blame me. And let alone those guys. I can forgive those guys because they know no better. When just I came from hospital, one of the ladies <laughs> said to me, Oh, Mother, you know, they don't I'm like, Are you for real? And she said, He is still our, our you know, Mother, we too. I'm like, Where? No, I knew. Where? Just go, I'll give you the address. Hey. You never catch me there. So no one cares about you. Nobody. They care on whether I'm like, you went to see him in Can you play? look at me? If I was your daughter, would you be talking that stuff to me? Would you, if God delivered your daughter from the lion's den, would you ask her to go back there and try to pass the lion? I'm never going there. If you want to go, if it's ministry, please go. By all means, but not me. Yeah. You can now send money to Kenya at great rates and with zero transfer fees. Trust TapTap for convenient safe and fast transactions to M-Pesa and to Kenyan bank accounts. Download today and get a bonus on your first transfer. I like the title of this book. Yes. It says uh, more than just a face. I like also that it has the flower mm. part here. It's beautiful. Thank you. I am not going to read the whole my husband. I yes. just want to pay attention to more than just a face. Maybe if you could tell us mm. why more than just a face. More than just a face. At that when I was in yeah. the bathroom, he said, Dekogwa, negeda I done that so I can be taken home. Na negeda utri mudoge uka kwaridia. No, he was out to destroy I'm me. I'm going to have you repeat that mm. again in English purely. Yes. Just so yeah. that no one will ever be attracted to you. Like, I'm not mm. like Attractive. translating yes. word for word. Yeah. But that's what he said. So he damaged your face. So that damaged no my face. He focused on you. my face. No other man will look at me. So when I came out, there are some ladies who used to come, who came to see me in the hospital. They didn't know me. They were just told in the church, oh, there's this lady, this, this happened. She is in the hospital. So they came to see me. Mm -hmm. And I looked like an old woman. My due, I was 35 years old or shortly after. I was 35. No, my daughter was born when I was 35. So you are That was 30. 2002. I was 37. 37. Mm -hmm. So I was really young. But I looked like an old woman after what I had gone through. So there is this lady past a friend of mine. So after they became my friends, after I came from hospital, we were seeing with them. And then I I have scrubbed up and I showed up and said, Oh my God, you are this young, beautiful lady. I thought you are an old woman. I told them I'm 37. Even some people have not started families by then. Mm -hmm. And then... She was full of like sorrow for me. Yeah. She was full of sympathy and sympathy breaks me. Yes. So I'm like, don't worry, my friend. I'm more than just a face. And that became my living slogan. More than just, more than just a face. He went for my face to destroy everything. So I lost my career. I lost my house, even the one I rented. I paid like three months rent without staying there. I stayed in homeless shelter for three months, four months with kids, everything down the drain. I was actually almost to be returned to Kenya. But so that was like my living motto. I am more than just a face. There is so much inside. Mm. And that strength came out. Yes. Uh, just came out. Just yeah. came out. Yeah. 
And that is what I have lived by. More than just a few. And then when I finally put it in a book, there was all that healing. That was the ultimate of my healing. Yeah. Because now it was so cathartic. Yes. And it came out mm. and and I had a lot of grace as well for doing it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Two questions. Mm. Have you found your career back or what? Oh do you yes. Do? Oh yeah. Yes, I hey, have. Man. <laughs> More than that. More, oh, where? Yeah? More than that. What the locust eight came double double? Oh, more than double. Ah, come on. He oh. pays a hundredfold. He's paid me a hundredfold. I'm a better person. Yeah. That is more important than career. Yes. And that strain that I was not aware of, right there inside, has come out. And yeah. it has. I I believe it's beautiful. Yeah. So uh, for career. I couldn't work for many years. For four, I have even stopped working for four years. Yeah. Because here, uh, you work. You work. Okay, I work as a nurse. Mm -hmm. You pay <laughs> child care per hour per child. Per hour per child. Now I have three. Per hour per child is more than is thought that nurses are highly paid. Fairly so. But per hour per child is double what the child might have want for my children. Uh -huh. And I was working, working, working. It would not. So at some point I got papers. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take a breather. So I stopped. I scaled down my working. It was still not making sense. Yeah. I stopped working. I said, I'm going to focus on these children. They are not going to be growing forever. And they are my priority. Mm. So I didn't work for four years. And I was just raising my kids. Yes. And I also sobered up a little bit okay. because I was drunk from too much shift. Mm. And then that, um, I always wanted to be a lecturer. Mm. I love education. Mm. Now, I wanted to be to be a doctor, but yeah. I didn't have the, yes. the chance. So I went into nursing, oh. but with the name of becoming a tutor. Mm -hmm. And I was already a tutor in Kenya. Yeah, That's why I was in education. Yes. When you come from Kenya to here, as I said, you come to the airport, they give you a broom and you take a broom. And some of us forget and you just zero in with the broom and your dreams are forgotten. Yes. But I didn't come like that, so I was into nursing. Mm. But my nursing is challenged. Mm. What hours do I work? Mm. Shifts are from 7 to 3, 3 to 9 p.m., 9 p.m. to 7 a.m. Mm. Which one can I do mm. with three babies mm -hmm. on my own? Mm. It was very hard. Mm. I tried all sorts. Uh, and then, but God has restored the, all that. So somehow he's put me back into education. Mm. I'm doing my lecturing job, which mm. I love. is my passion. Yeah, I love now. educating. I love education. Yeah. And then um, <clears throat> I am an author of this book. Of course. More than just a face. Yes. And that is my passion. Yes. I love that. Yeah. If I didn't have to pay bills, I would do that full time. Okay. Because I want to touch heart. Yes. And this issue is so, so close to my heart that I lead it. I dream it. I live it. It's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. And the book has open doors. I go and do talk shows. I work with organizations, yes. churches, yeah. uh, universities, mm -hmm. schools, mm -hmm. anyone who mm -hmm. want to listen. Mm -hmm. And my, 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 the theme yeah. or what we want to do is not to condemn, is not to blame, mm. that is not going to help yes. us. We've done that for yeah. long. It's not to build more refugees because we cannot feed the people who mm. are going through abuse mm -hmm. in the refugees. Mm -hmm. How can we reduce? How can we prevent? Yeah. So my thing is creating awareness mm. how it works, mm. the systems in place to mm -hmm. make sure it happens yes. and to keep people who are going through it there and that's beautiful yes yes so the book has born also an organization about to re register yeah it's called hope inspired okay and that is that's a to good name yes yes to do i want to do work here i also want to do work in kenya yeah especially in kenya please because i know we are behind yeah. and i listen to shows and i still think there are big gaps only because i have traveled and i can look from outside like an mm. outsider mm. that gives me a sort of mm. an advantage mm. so i can see things mm. i can see the few gaps. things mm. few gaps mm. because it's something that twists your mind like i love this person this person hates me loves me 
last minute and honeymoon crisis honeymoon crisis and that Mm. So I I want to reach people before they get there. Once mm. you are in the system, mm. it's too late. Mm -hmm. For me, it's too late. Yeah. We need to be aware before we get into relationships. Yes. So my other thing is um, I'm a healthy relationship yeah. coach, yeah. self-appointed. There we go. And I'm a mother yeah. of do sons yes. and daughters. Yes. And I want everyone to live happily. I've seen the impact. I'm still dealing with the impact of that behavior. Mm. And I don't condemn anyone. But let's work with ourselves. If you feel like you want to hit someone, as a man, as a woman, you need work to do. And it's not anger management. It's nothing to do with anger management. Because why didn't you hit your boss when you are angry? Or the wall. Or the wall or your father or your mother is just this person you hit. It's about power and control. Mm. So it's not that you have issue with anger. No, it's not. You have the issue with the person. You have issue with your with person and within you. Yes. Yeah, work you are, on you yourself. You have power yeah. and control yeah. stuff. You yeah. want to. Yeah. yeah. So that is the other thing I'm doing. Yeah. I talk a lot. I talk. No, I say okay. I say I'll talk yes. on this until the cows oh, come oh, home. Okay, all right. So now we gotta wind up. But <laughs> now you know you're a British citizen? Yes. Okay, that's beautiful. What message do you have for people who want to come to these countries and work and try things out? Mm, I believe in trying. Mm. So and God gives opportunity to people. Yeah. So it's it's okay, mm. and then you 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 go to places and you learn yeah. things, many yes. things, different things. Yeah, and um, I think it's okay, but not to have like a fairy tale about mm. it. Or mm. you you need to be open minded yeah. because there are some people who are doing very well back in Kenya. Mm. Some of my friends are doing very well. Mm -hmm. Back and home. sometimes when I, I'm looking, I'm like, oh, on hindsight. Mm. But then hindsight is a great thing. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's good to try things out. Mm. Even now I'm not working in UK. Mm. I like trying different things. Trying things. So, yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I know you asked me to save this one for you, the card. Yes. Yes. So that if I ask you where can people find you, yes. you are able, because I know they'll come, so many people who are going to be inspired by your story, yes. and uh, they would want to reach out, so yes. maybe if you could give them, or oh, can I give them? Yes, please. I can do. give them. You want do. me to give the website, yes. the email? You can give okay. the email. Okay, yeah, but before I even give them the email, mm. the name as we wind up, Abby, mm. why Abby? Abby? Mm, that is a bit I love most. Yes. I'm very inspired by the Bible. Yeah. And what inspired me to take on the name Abby, yeah. the, there's a lot in a name. Mm -hmm. As the Bible says, as his name is, so is he. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot in a name. Yeah. And I, when I was broken, yes. I used to read the Bible a lot and find inspiration, find encouragement. So I came on this story of Abby, yeah. the wife of Nabal. And this guy, he was, he was an abuser, basically. He was about to make his whole family be annihilated mm. because uh, he used to have shepherds and they go and, and they, David was also in the fields mm. and they would protect him. Mm -hmm. And then he made a request. My due by this time, David was anointed to be king. He made a simple, polite request. He yeah. said, and it was a season of merry and cheering, the when you are supposed to be generous as per custom. Mm -hmm. And then this man was like, Who is David? I'm not gonna cheer with me, my meat with every nobody who mm -hmm. wants to come for it. Mm -hmm. And so David was like, We protected you. By evening, there will not be a male in your house. Mm -hmm. And because Abigail was the, I like the way she was working yeah. in the household. Yeah. She was looking after the servants. They trusted her. They came and told her what what uh, was happening. Yes. What I like about that story is that she was a woman who was 
you know the thing I have to ask permission from my husband uh. if she was to do that they would have been finished mm. the bible records that she saddled a donkey put food and told the servants to go and she didn't tell her husband by that time he was drunk and merry he was made a feast for himself as for a king and they went and resolved mm. their crisis. Mm. And then she told him the following morning, yeah. that was pure wisdom for yes. me, which saved the family. Yeah. And where I was at, I identified with Abigail and I thought, wow, here I am, I'm on my own. I have to raise these sons and I have to raise this daughter. And I have no one to depend on except God. So I have to deal with this crisis and God helped me to have wisdom, mm -hmm. and he has done. Good job, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. So I adopted the name as well. Ah, I adopted it as a joke, but yes. it's fairly official. Yeah. Everyone calls, I'm making it official yeah. as well. Please do, <laughs> Abigail, <laughs> yes. please do. Thank yes. you, ma'am, for even making time. Yes. I know you've traveled mm. uh, for a couple of hours just to be here yes. and share your story. Yes. And I do not take you coming here for granted. You too. Lady. Yes, and Thank you're just you. amazing. Thank you. You really are amazing. Yes. So I'm just going to read to them the email, yes. which is also going to appear here on the screen. It's abby at hopeinspired.org.uk or the website is www.hopeinspired.org.uk. Yes. yes. Yeah. I and I would like to say one thing oh, before. Do. No, so I'm doing work on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yes. Okay. Because I can't do much in this yes. 40 minute slot. Yes. So I really want to build this YouTube channel mm. where we can talk about all this stuff. Go on. Like I want to do them in Sally. Mm. So I've started, um, I've only done seven, seven videos. Yeah. Okay, what's your And I have added 60 <laughs> subscribers. You have 160 <laughs> subscribers. yesterday. No, they are, oh, 60. 161. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Tell them what's the name of the channel. The name so they is my name. Abby, Abby Mumbi. Good. I also do work on Facebook. You see a lot of work yes. because I'm doing some huge yeah, events. Yeah. On face some are on Facebook. I yes. did a huge event. Mm. It's called Hear Me Roar. Oh, Hear Me Roar. Check that out, please. <laughs> Here I'm Miro, just, I was a eh, guest eh, and I was a co-guest with one of the X Factor eh, oh, finalists. Oh, really? She also was a survivor. I'm a survivor. You so, are a survivor. So, yeah. Check that out. And a strong one. And, um, yeah. You and are. I use the same name. Yes. But I really, really need to do this YouTube stuff it's because okay. there I can do. Yeah, you I can, can actually do, teach people. I can achieve you much can, more. Yeah. What else do I do? Yeah. And hope inspired, I'm yes. praying that is going to pick up. It's going to pick up as, as by a, grace through faith. Mm, by grace yeah. through faith. Yeah. I've really, really been inspired by your story. Uh, it's beautiful God. to meet someone who has conquered, to meet someone who is still on the journey, but yes. they know they are just more than a face. Yes. To meet someone who is, I understand sympathy is a good thing, yes. but can we have a bit of empathy? A lot because of empathy. I don't want you feeling sorry for yourself for the rest of your life. Either. I don't, and I like that you don't like, yes. and I know your show is going to inspire so many people, Amen. especially survivors of Amen. domestic uh, violence. Mm -hmm. My mom being one of them, yes. I know it's really going to inspire them. So Amen. kudos to you. Amen. Amen. And thank you for lighting that torch yes. for so many other women yes. so that they get to know Amen. it's not the end. You see God. my torch? What's that? Oh, that yeah. is a domestic violence champion. See, see you have a so torch. I'm working, I'm working as a, with, um, it's called reducing the risk yeah. of domestic violence. Oh, really? So, yeah, I That's bear beautiful. that torch. Uh, they do that a they lot. That. They have someone, a mm. champion in the organization. You see, thanks yes. for lighting yours yes. for us. And Thank I know God. your kids are super proud of you. Yes, they thanks are. for I'm forgiving. proud of them. Yeah. They are the most wonderful people in mm. this world. Mm. I'm, I'm glad. I thank mm. God for them. And thanks for forgiving yes. and deciding we don't have to be reconnected. Yes. Cindy, yes. Yes. Yeah. please show the book. I'm going to show. The, it's actually on the screen. It's been oh. on the screen for a while now. Oh, yes. Really? <laughs> it's it's so been sad. on the screen for a while now. Yeah, I hope and it they is can on get Amazon. A it's on Amazon. It's on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And it is in Kenya. I've left yeah. some copies in Kenya. Yeah. So they can be sent to people okay. if you want. Yes. And I said, 
copies you say UK copies. wide yeah yes it's beautiful and thank you Thanks. yeah let me allow me to wind up huh? yes. and i just hope today whoever watches get to realize they are more than just a face yes more than just a name mm. more than just a stereotype mm. they are more than just what people have said about yes. them and i hope they can get it in their heart to just come out and really conquer mm. and you guys who are watching back at home i would really appreciate your views huh, on today's conversations and i say that knowing that we have a lot of domestic uh, violence uh, domestic abuse survivors and victims too on our platform but i also just to let you guys know that it's not over until god says so it's not over until god says so give yourself mm -hmm. a name mm -hmm. find something that describes you find something that defines you be abigail you do not have to stick to the norm you can come out mm -hmm. and you can give yourself a new identity mm -hmm. because what people cannot take away from you is who you are within mm -hmm. you and yes. always remember you can forgive but it yes. does not mean that you have to be reconnected and forgiveness is for you more than it is for that mm -hmm. particular mm -hmm. person yes. thank you for tuning in guys i really do appreciate your support i look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the lean googie show and as always if you want to go and if you want to reach out to abby her contact ad no the email address and the website is right here on the screen pinned on the comment section below is her youtube channel's link go out there guys support her and do not forget to say that lynn sent you want to share your story with me my email is also right here on the screen thank you so much for tuning in and of course to our amazing our sponsors at tap tap guys download that app you can use it for money transfer they have amazing rates and also when you do remember i have your best interest at heart and i would never send you guys to you know just download an app that i don't trust in so try tap tap out give me your honest opinion also on the comment section see you on the next episode my name is lynn gogi till next time bye bye